You know what? So <laughs> I kind of started this when yeah. I was younger because I feel like I have like seven personalities in okay. here. So I have like different voices for different parts of me. Yeah. Um, and then I used to get free shit talking yeah. like that. Like if I didn't have my, my Metro card, yeah. like, hello, I'm trying to get to Yankee Stadium. Do you know where that is? They're like, are you from here? I'm like, no, just visiting. <laughs> Not damn well. I live That's right nice. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, success yeah, after lockdown rain. welcomes Miss yeah. Silver Rain. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you for coming. We've oh, yeah. oh, been God, looking God. forward to this. Yes, so, I know. <laughs> no blessing. We got Silver in the seat now. Yes. We got Rain in the building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we got to touch on a lot of things. So in case people don't know who Silver Rain is, mm -hmm. the world you will know soon enough. If you haven't followed her on her IG page, I suggest you do so. Please and thank you. Yeah. Right. And so we, and so it's going to be day pleasure. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. So now what I want to do is just, uh, you know, back up a little bit okay. and just talk about for us, man, for our audience. Tell us who Silver Rain is, where she come from. Okay. You know what I mean? Just your upbringing. All yeah. right. So, I mean... Silver Rain and Rain, totally different people, right? So um, Rain, I'll start with me. Um, I started singing as a child for my family for a chocolate bar. <laughs> it sounds crazy yeah, as I hear it, like yeah. being said out loud. It's a little uh -huh. bit embarrassing. No, I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a lot of chocolate bars. Right, that's how it started, people. <laughs> chocolate. <totally> so. <laughs> Um, I remember um, it was a show in my school, and my uncle was like, you're going to sing, and I'll give you a chocolate bar. So I was like, fuck it, okay. <laughs> I'm singing, and I sang, and I found out then that I had a voice, and I just started singing after that. Um, I would sing at functions, at my family functions. Um, when my mom would do my little rolos, I would take like the brush yeah. that they usually use yeah. and I would sing and I would perform. It was just always something I did as a child. And then as I got older, um, I volunteered my time in my community, Havridge. Uh, Shout out to Havridge. Yeah. We would take all of the... Big up to Havridge. The, yes, Real. yes. For those um, out there that don't know, where's Havridge at? Tell them. The Bronx. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, baby. The Bronx. Uh, All day, every day. Yeah. Uh, um, but we would take like the the children there, and um, my mom took our living room, threw away her sofas, put mirrors all over, and that was our dance studio, our singing studio. We just did so many things in my living room. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how yeah. I started. Um, and then Silver Rain was eventually uh, created um, because I'm I'm a vibe person. I see colors. It's really weird. Um, so I'll read someone's aura, and every time I look in the mirror, I just I see silver. It's weird. Like I see a silver lining around me. So I'm like, that's cute. If I put that in my name, right. Silver Rain. So that's Absolutely. how she was created. Mm, nice. That, nice. That's Absolutely. What color aura you see on me? I kind of see lavender. 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 I like lavender. Yeah? I, I might as well <laughs> give it a go here. Yeah. <laughs> I was with you. Me. It's like a bluish green. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's crazy because my favorite color is sky blue. Too. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He could vouch That's for me. Right. <laughs> so yeah. what was it like for, for, for rain or silver rain? Right now you're talking to Rain. Hi. I'm talking to Rain now. Hey, <laughs> what was it like as a child? No, yes, expounding on that. Like that's amazing family support. Yes. And you're Puerto Rican, right? I have so many like? things. Just so many things. Mm -hmm. Also, but just Spanish, right? In the yeah. background on that. Yep. And that's amazing that you have this family support to actually get rid of their furniture. Was it the furniture like the plastic and all that? No, no. luckily, because you know you can't touch that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it has plastic that's on it, don't touch, don't yeah. move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like don't move. Yeah, that's right. No, it was it was some nice sofas. They were very comfortable. I love you, mommy, for that. I don't know if yeah. I've ever, ever said thank you. Big no. shout out well, to mommy. Thank you. Mama yeah. love. Thank you, mommy, yeah. for doing that. Cause I'm. 
I know how expensive sofas are. Yeah, yes. don't worry. She's gonna buy you a new set. So. Seventeen of them, whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> what were the? Um, you have any other siblings? Yes, I do. Oh. I have an older sister. I love her. Um, I have three brothers, and then I also like my biological father. He was a Rolling Stone, so <laughs> yeah. I got a couple siblings Absolutely. out there. Yeah. So how that was growing up with three brothers. <laughs> um, so they're younger. Um, so I was raised with one at the time. Okay. Um, and that was pretty cool. We kind of blamed everything on him. It was easier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tony. I'm the youngest. <laughs> I'm, like, ah. I'm so sorry. I would blame, like, uh, we broke a... My sister broke a house key. She's like, I'll give you my Princess Jasmine doll um, if you lie and say it was Tony. I'm like, okay. It was Tony. It was Tony. I wanted to sing with that Princess Jasmine doll. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Gr growing up in the Bronx. Yeah. In your area, mm -hmm. going to school, what was that like for you? <sighs> um... I mean, those who live in the Bronx, y'all already know how it is over there. It's not, we do it. it's not the best. Um, but I think because of how my mom kind of sheltered me and put me in the bubble of um, the arts and singing and dancing, I never really got to experience like what was really out there mm -hmm. um, until later on in my later years. Um, Absolutely. But... Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that it was horrible. It could have been worse. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of fights and a lot of things like that that I wish I could just take away. And because I'm not, I'm not a fighter. I love. Mm -hmm. Like I just want to hug people and mm -hmm. just love on yeah. people. But yeah. when you live in the Bronx, well, you got to like, <laughs> When you live in the you Bronx, gotta you, that. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. You definitely got to like have the tough skin. Absolutely, but I don't. I don't have it. So I was luck luckily enough to have people around me that loved me so much that they protected me. That's like. Right. Um, God rest his soul, but there was a guy, he, he, he clocked my schedule. Like he knew when I would get out of school and he would always be on the opposite side and kind of walking alongside me without a long, like walking with me mm -hmm. and walk me to my building without walking me to my building. It was yeah. like, everybody knew like, she's not about that life. Right. So let me protect her. Like she's dope. Yeah. That's always what I had around me. That's nice. Nice. That's a really nice and that's just that, and, and again, I guess that goes back to your aura. People can like read your aura, and, yeah. and, 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 and we can always tell, right? Yeah. Who's about that life? Who's trying to do something positive? Who's not trying to follow that the part. crowd? Yep. Right. Because I think we grew up with some people like that in the neighborhood too. Absolutely. That you know, like Wild Style. Wild Style wasn't about that life, and you know what I mean. Like kind of always shelter home because we, like he was. Protection I call him my cousin. I call him like my cousin, right? Mm -hmm. And we grew up. We was like actually tight. Step over each other's house, but like when it came mm -hmm. to like going out on the block, hustling, doing stuff, he used to be like, Yeah, yep. because <laughs> see you make it yeah. back, buddy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because you got this accent. The first thing I was getting ready to say, well, we're, we're, Did you grow up in Paris? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like I wasn't London. thinking of the Bronx, no, so, right? You know what? So, <laughs> I kind of started this when yeah. I was younger because I feel like I have like seven personalities in okay. here. So I have like different voices for different parts of me. Of, yeah. um, and then I used to get free shit talking yeah. like that. Like if I didn't have my, my Metro card, yeah. like, hello, I'm trying to get to Yankee Stadium. Do you know where that is? They're like, are you from here? I'm like, no, just visiting. <laughs> Going damn well. I live That's <laughs> right nice. <laughs> You're a fish in the past, I right? love it. But they gave me the ride for free. Like, That's you wouldn't right. have given me the ride for free if I was like, yo, I, I can't find my yeah, metro. Yeah, like, yo, right. I, need to, I, need to right. I need to go to the Bronx. I just came from the Bronx. Oh, lovely. Listen, so tell me about the rest of your family dynamics. Like, you know, I know your mom supported you, mm -hmm. family. Like what? What motivates you today to do what you what you're doing to continue to keep pushing forward to actually yet continue to be this kind, caring person, right? Mm -hmm. In a world that seems to be so dark and bleak, and mm. you know, covered with such mental health disorders, anger, resentment, hatred, mm -hmm. right? How does that still keep you balanced to say, you know what? I'm going to stay to my true being. Especially growing up in the Bronx. Yeah. 
So I'm very big on mental health, right? I've had panic attacks. Like, I mean, I was in the ICU type of panic attack. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what keeps me balanced and motivated is my family. It's, it's me knowing that I want to take them out of the situation that they're in and just move them into something so much better. Like, I feel like they deserve the f world. Like, if I could take my mom right now and just move her to the fucking mountains, just That's protect right. her and keep her, you know what I mean? I would do that in a second. So I think my family motivates me and keeps me like just sane and balanced and they also drive me insane so it's like kind it's of a balance. it's a balance of course, right? but they're definitely what does it and i probably can say without a doubt that if your mother wants to move to the mountain you will be able to fulfill that one day oh i can't wait and one day soon yes. right but you gotta make sure to see if she wants to leave the bronx i used to tell that to my mom all the oh, time yeah, and my true. mom used to always tell me i'm not going true. nowhere i am yeah. a bronx chick she's yeah, new I york city where i'm going in yeah. i am like but mom don't you want to get out no i'll go visit listen my mom is <laughs> yay high she's straight bronx she's jordan out like yeah. you would love her <laughs> sweet sweet that, sweet that, that, that lived in, that still lives in, in 1010 West Farms. Oh, yeah. And she, she li been living there for over 50 years. She had mm -hmm. never leave. It's their comfort. She says she's yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. It's their comfort. No, that's what I want no you to say, you know, and like, let's talk about where you looking to go with your life, with your music. What is your hope? Mm. My hope is to, um, I want to, <laughs> Okay, I want to I want to word it correctly. I don't want anyone to ever take offense to what I say, but I feel like the music that is out now is a lot of shaking of the ass and and just a lot of like um I call it disrespectful music. Mm -hmm. It's more like I think I heard something of I fucked on your bro or some weird stuff. I was yeah. like, "Huh? Like yeah. when has it become a thing to start saying all of these yeah. vulgar, weird things. Yeah. Like, what? Well, I don't mind talking and singing about pain because everybody yeah. goes through pain. Everybody yeah. goes through heartbreak. Everybody's a fool for someone. I, I want to bring that type of music back, the feel good music. And that's what we need. Yeah. And I absolutely agree with you that the music industry, you know, understand they, they the industry, when it comes to anything, is so by negativity. When you turn on the news, yeah. you know, 90% of the news is, is, is negativity, you know, 8% of the weather. You know it stays weather. longer, right? Huh? It, it was like scientifically proven that negativity stays longer in your of system. Course. Of course. This is why it sells. This is why yeah. when, you know, music, like we were talking before, you know, we went on air. Mm -hmm. You know, the energy, the music, the feel-good music, it really can mess up your psyche in a either positive or a negative way. Yep. If you're sitting and constantly listening to music that does not make you feel good or feed your, or, soul. Or, 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 or feed your soul or keeps you calm, mm -hmm. you're going to react to that. If I stay listening to some hardcore hip-hop all day, every day, right, 24-7, right. about guns, shoot them up, drugs, F this, F that. Hypes. that that's, my, that's my mentality, Yeah. Okay. right? So I try to balance it with some good music. Like we were talking about that old school Mary J. Bly, feel good, yes, painful feel music, good music, right? With some hope and some sure. love and all of that. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we need. And when you look at the industry now and some of these females and the stuff that they they, they, they talking about, it's just like, first of all, you want to be respected in the industry. You don't want to be called a bitch. Right. You don't want to be considered a, a thought mm -hmm. and all this, but yet it's okay for you to refer to yourself mm -hmm. as that mm -hmm. and it's your just, music. It's, it's what sells. Right? It's, what, it's what sells, right? Because I'm sure when she goes home, she's loving on her man. Yeah. And, and you know, it's the opposite. But, but the minute someone sees her and be like, hey, yo, thought, what's up? It's a problem. Absolutely, yeah. Right? And so yeah. W how, how do we change that barrier? How do we get... By putting more light to real music. Yeah. We glorify things and then kind of question why is this being shown so much well because like for example i've always heard guys are always like i want a natural girl i get yeah, it you what? want the natural women but why are the 
women with the fake butts getting so many likes yeah. you're glorifying the wrong thing so it makes women feel like they have to do that right. the more you guys start glorifying natural women and they get more likes and they're more up there then it's like okay well that's what I want to yeah. feel I want that because that's getting all the likes and all uh -huh. the you know what I mean the yeah. attention Absolutely. we need to put the light back on real music more glorify that natural that's right. There you <laughs> go. Absolutely. Right. I got a question, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, just if you could, like, um, share with us this is your experience on how Exodus came about in your life. Got you. Exodus community yeah. Uh, yeah. transitional, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, rock. So um, who? Rock. Rock oh, who? Rock Rilla. <laughs> rock Rilla? <laughs> big, big, big up to big Rock. Big shout out yeah. to the Rock Rilla. <laughs> Forgot the underscore Rock Rilla. No, yeah. so, um, well, I call him Raphael. Raphael. And I, I've known him since seven. Um, mm. And him and I always did music. And I remember he called me up one day and he's like, yo, where you at? And I'm like, um, actually, I'm on my way to New York City. He's like, good. Come over to Exodus. I want you to meet somebody. So I was like, mm, okay. As long as there's food involved, you can get me anywhere. <laughs> so I came. It's like somebody um, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't All with it. No <laughs> <laughs> so I came. Um, I actually met Chris, um, who does the Exodus Productions. Absolutely. And we kind of clicked, and it was up since then like I started singing and and getting back into singing because actually I stopped singing for a while mm -hmm. um so he kind of brought me back into that mm -hmm. and that's kind of how that happened how I met little Exodus here yeah so mm -hmm. so tell me why you stopped singing for a while if you could share that with us um I think at the time when everything was gonna blow I don't think I was mentally ready I think I would have had like some type of Demi Lovato situation mm -hmm. because I feel like if you're not mentally strong to deal with the, the business aspect of this industry, it's it's crazy. It'll eat you alive. Like mm -hmm. it's it's not an easy um, industry. Absolutely. So I was I, God was like, Nah, sit down. They got to Demi too. Yeah, I, I, I love Demi Lovato. De listen, <laughs> yeah. you're so beautiful. Beautiful, be oof, I don't even want to touch that because that, that whole thing was very emotional for me yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. um, I had a similar story to that, so I, I don't ever talk too much about it Feel because it, it yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I guess we can all guess what that is, right? But let me yeah. tell you something, those, those, those stories, mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at it in retrospect and where you're at now, mm -hmm. believe it or not, and I tell people this all the time, you never know who you're gonna say something to, mm. right? That can impact their life. Right, or and save I was them. having this conversation with one of my residents the other day because he was very, like, really sad and distorted. He has a physical disability, but he's a tutor. He teaches English. Mm. And he came back and he was just like, "Why?" Well, what happened was the student he was teaching was making fun of his disability in Portuguese, like he didn't understand Portuguese. And they were laughing at him, and it really, like, literally came back and came to my office, and he literally, like, crying, like, why is the world so freaking mean? Like, why are they so hateful? Like, I get up mm -hmm. to go and, and help these people. This is a gentleman that's diagnosed with anxiety, PTSD, you know, depression, bipolar, and on a spectrum. Wow. Right? And he was just like, Anthony, I, just, I don't get it. And, and I was like, listen... He goes, I try to talk to people, and I go, listen, sometimes the person you're trying to connect with may not be the message. The message may not be ready to be received from them. It may be that person that's standing outside of that conversation that can overhear what you say and that you have that impact on that life. Yeah. So don't ever change who you are or, or feel ashamed or whatever your disability may be mm -hmm. because those disabilities does not set you different from anybody else those are the things that you need to empower yourself right. with right and you yet keep being the next person yeah you right. continue to be who you are this is why it needs to be again this is where i say it needs to be more light shine on those things why do we not have a, a disabled princess or uh um in tv shows we fall in love with characters but it's mm -hmm. always the popular character mm -hmm. 
have a disabled popular character mm -hmm. so that people fall in love and visually are being shown these things. It's not. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. No, let's keep talking about that. There's mm -hmm. nothing like, you know, I don't mention about the mental health. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, that's the industry that I'm in. Mm -hmm. How important and imperative that you know the world is now starting to say okay let's let's have this conversation about mental health let's yeah. now start talking finally. about it yeah mm -hmm. finally it had to take COVID to hit before now people not realizing hey man Very i'm suffering important. through some anxiety i because got some somebody PTSD. higher up probably went through that shit and was right. like wait a minute yeah. <laughs> and like literally you know i i i i i have about 100 residents you know for mental health transition in florida I, and the other day I had to send them uh, in a group chat like a hundred names of famous people and celebrities with mental health disabilities. Wow. And, I, and I tell them all, it doesn't, it doesn't have to limitate you to what you can do and what you can achieve. Yep. And I started, you know, mentioning all some names and they was like, oh, my phone just started blowing up. Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. And I go, yeah, that's, that's why I'm, I'm sending it to you because I don't want you to... And the conversation started with one of the guys went for a job interview. Mm -hmm. And he comes to me, he goes, Anthony, um, should I tell him about my diagnosis? And I go, your diagnosis is your business. That's nobody's business. Like, yeah. you don't have to disclose that. But if you choose to, is that your own discretion? Right. That's your prerogative. As long as you're seeking the help and you're on the medication, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the people won't know what your diagnosis is. Yeah, it's true. when you're not properly medicated is when you come off those medications and you let the life stressors come in mm -hmm. and stimulate your mind in a wrong negative way. Right. right. That people may start saying, yo, what the frick is wrong with such and such person? But I feel like I, I feel like a lot of corporations or businesses, let's be real, they judge. Like yeah, yeah, they're not supposed to, but I feel like they will definitely like put like something on that paper. Oh. This is why people are so afraid to be like, hey, by the way, I have this. Absolutely. You're so you're so right about that. And this is why, like I said, you know, we're heading into we're heading into a time now where, okay, again, we we can start to talk about it, but is the world ready to really embrace a person that's mm -hmm. diagnosed with schizophrenia, right? No. Not no. Yet. And I tell people all the time, listen, my best <laughs> residents, right? I have 37, wow. 37 residents with schizophrenia. And if you talk to them, you wouldn't even know. My cousin has that. You have to literally get to know them and know the signs that they will display mm -hmm. when they respond to eternal stimuli. Right. Whether it be visual, auditory, right? Yeah. You can see, but it's not the danger that everybody thinks. Because it's the movie. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and, and and it's so sad, right? And it's mm -hmm. so sad, and like I'm, I'm I'm about to tear up, but it's so sad. Yeah, and like you know, we need to start advocating this. Absolutely, yes. and so I would say there's a big stigma on on this, right? Yeah. What we're talking about. At the same time, because I have a um a person that I work with that suffers from that as well, mm -hmm. um in the Newburgh office at Exodus, you know, and. I noticed that, you know, we do have those that's diagnosed with, with this, mm -hmm. and it's coming out now where they, they, they're really aware, mm -hmm. and they're able to express that they're diagnosed with this mm -hmm. and live with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there is, there is a, 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 a level of normalcy coming around. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we, we far from it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. However, I, I, I'm seeing that level, mm -hmm. that groove of normalcy that's coming around. In certain around. places. Absolutely. It needs to be worldwide. Right, and this is why that's we right. need to speak about it, you know, because I, 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 I know I've had, I got residents that go through the panic attacks, right? Ugh. And, when, and it's, it's not a real thing. And, like, yeah. if you don't mind, we really want to talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. what are some of the coping skills Oh, I have a bunch. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, let's, 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 okay. let's talk about it. Let's put it out there because let's, let's just shed some light, mm -hmm. not only on, 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 on the industry and who civil reign is and who reign is, right. but about the mental health disability that people allow to hinder them from moving forward. Exactly. Right? Let's That's talk about right. it. That's right. And it's listen, okay. I, like, like I said, I have, um, I go through my depression 
the whole light situation, mm-hmm. they called me a vampire because I would be in the dark. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things that I do is I'll, you get that tingle, right? You get that, that tingle in your left arm and it starts going here. You think you're gonna fucking die from a stroke. You're like, nope. So I start inhaling really slow through my nose and then out through my mouth, right? And then I just start doing this mm-hmm. right here. Mm-hmm. That's it. And this may be weird, but if you really look at me, this is not on my shoulder the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely. This is almost like a blanket for me. Security blanket. Yes. If I bring it all the way up, I will, <laughs> I will have a straight like panic attack right now. Yeah. So this is kind of like my security blanket. If you look at my IG, you'll see I have this on a lot. A lot, like in a lot of my photos. Um, another thing I do is um, uh, ice on the back of my neck. Same. Yeah. What are you wrote right there? Ice. <laughs> huh? What did I yeah. right there before yeah. you said it, huh? There we go. Let's ice. talk about it now. <laughs> It nah. works, people. <laughs> it it works wherever the camera is. <laughs> That's right. It works, and it does help. It brings it brings the lightheadedness because it feels like you're gonna pass out down. Um, actually, the sad part is Rock can tell you I I passed out in his arms before, and this is from catching a severe panic attack and me not being able to breathe. It almost feels like your throat is closing. And the more you try to calm yourself down, the more lightheaded you get. Just stay still. Be still. Be still. Try to, like, breathe. I do, like I said, I do that. The ice on the neck. Like, those are things that I do that kind of calm me down. And also, tell yourself you're okay. Mm-hmm. Because before, I'm like, this is it. This is how I'm going. Like, what's happening? And now I'm like, Rain, like, you're good. In like five minutes, you're gonna be fine, and you're mm-hmm. gonna laugh at this. Chill, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's fine. And and it doesn't stop you from reaching Performing. your goals, from yep. moving forward, from yep. living life. Yep. It's a temporary moment at a temporary situation, and those coping skills get you through them. And when you learn those coping skills, man, it's very important to have mm-hmm. someone around that knows those coping skills yes. to help you walk through them, yes. right? Doesn't stop you from still going to the studio, recording. Doesn't stop yep. you from taking pictures with a thousand celebrities, exactly. right? And even though in those moments, right, you're learning and a lot of people, like, they, they, they freeze themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they think about it too much. And, yeah. And, and this is why we need more people in society to understand these mm-hmm. the mechanisms. Yeah. And, and you know, my, and, 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 and we we all be able to, mm-hmm. you know, get along with, you know. I, 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 absolutely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of looking at people because the stigma was, you know, mental health's crazy. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the first thing that people thought. No, and, what they said, uh, oh, what what. You don't look like a person that has panic attack. Well, what does it look like? Yeah, right? Does it look like a person in the corner like that? Right. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, I, I get that all the time. And I tell people all the time, I say, if I didn't tell you, you didn't know. You wouldn't know yeah, that I suffered same. through depression. Yeah. You wouldn't know that I, I, I was prescribed medication for yep. depression, right? Yeah. And I tell people, and the thing about with depression, right, depression, even with medication, right, without medication, it, it's like this. Right, that roller coaster, that deep roller coaster, that cyclone. Yep. With medication, it just goes like this. Yep. And then it, it may dip, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing about med- uh, depression is like when you when you dare, you just gotta ride the wave. Yes. Right, but I'd rather ride this wave here mm-hmm. than this yeah. long wave <laughs> down here, right? right? Yep. Where you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to shower, you don't want to do nothing. Yeah. Everything is bleak. It's gotta be dark. It's gotta be like those are fucking the like. Those days, like, they come, mm-hmm. and, but I learned some coping skills, and I still push yeah. through. And, and nobody will ha- know. Find your happy medium. Like, I still like the dark, but now I add light. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> there you go. You know, for me, I like to just get on my motorcycle and go for a ride. I put my music that's on. That's scary. I, yeah, I put my music <laughs> on. I put my head. Listen, that's for me. When I'm feeling Thanks. like I'm there, mm-hmm. I, like, I get on my motorcycle. I go take a ride. Do you do this, the speed limit? You paused. <laughs> no, don't even answer it. That's scary. <laughs> don't even answer so, it. So, well, there's two parts to that, right? Mm-hmm. So, when I'm like... He does like now. That, he right. Now, before, when I was riding with, with my Rough Riders, I was, 
I had no switch. Okay. But now I learned that some days I just need to like just feel the open air. Okay. I'll put some music. I go ride down the beach coastline and I do about 35, 40 miles per hour. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but that's also because that's nothing but like beaches and mansions over there. So the police okay. is on every point, right? Gotcha. And no, but I will get on 95 and I will do, you know, 80, 90, 100, 20. <laughs> no. Yeah, right? But it, it's a quick rush and it's over with, right? But Got that works you. for me. Okay. Right? Talking, music works for me. Mm-hmm. Going for a walk works for me, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And like we were talking about Rock Rilla. Let's go back for Rock Rilla for a second, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like the connection you have to have. Mm-hmm. Like you really get like one person out of a neighborhood that has some potential, those type of talent, right? But to have two yeah. and to grow up and to go through an experience, reconnect. right? And to reconnect. Yeah. That's right. All right? Yeah, that's and so like weird. that's amazing. And readjust. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. there's adjusting with relationships now. Yeah. yeah. Whatever yeah. they may be, friend relationships or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And, mother, and, uh, mother son relationships, mother daughter, like uh, and and gone that, for that, years. And, and that yeah, support, you know, and every time that we come over here, you know, to the studio, mm-hmm. um, and we see you like you're always smiling, like you you always yeah. you're always happy, like you you zone out into your music and what Thank you're you. doing. And again, if we wasn't sitting here today and you didn't tell us, hey, you know, I I, I suffer through this, mm-hmm. you would have never know. known. Nobody would even know. Yeah. Right. So let's start changing how we view a person because they say mental health. Right. Let's hear the whole story before we pass the judgment. Exactly. Right. Because everybody want to click call everybody crazy mm-hmm. and to listen to your own family. Yep. Right? Or it's you. Or it's you. Mm-hmm. You know, like I always say, you got those that are born with it and that's them that acquired it. Yep. Right? And you can acquire it. And people don't realize and they go, how, how can you even? I said, you can't. Life. Believe it or not. <laughs> life be life then. Mm-hmm. That's going to be my logan. Mm-hmm. What type of advice do you give, uh, you know, that, 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 those individuals that that go through life like yourself? I, okay, so my new thing, um, because I, I still haven't figured it out, to be honest, right? But what mm-hmm. I'm, what I would tell someone is be gentle with yourself. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Because I don't care how old you are or how experienced you think you are, everybody hurts, everybody goes through things, everybody feels really low and then very high. Um, so I would say be gentle with yourself, love on yourself. Cause I swore up and down. You could not tell me I didn't love myself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm just now loving myself mm-hmm. and still struggle with that. So love on yourself and date yourself. Like start getting to know what you like by yourself mm-hmm. without needing someone else to kind of validate you mm-hmm. as a person. That's right. Um, I'm actually going to even take myself out on a date. Nice. And I know that's kind of weird. No, it's not. It <laughs> is wow. not. Well, because nobody, <laughs> we nobody do. says like. Again, I'm how we're raised, right? And what we see on TV, we see the guy chasing the girl, and yeah. we see the girl like, oh, oh my god. That's you know what it, I mean? It's yeah. just it's a visual that we grow up on. That that's what we expect. Mm-hmm. No one ever shows on TV like the girl is taking herself out on a date and buying herself flowers and yeah. treating herself. Yeah, so self care. Of course, self care. Nobody that's talks it. about that. Of course not, right? Because it's like it's a childish thing. It's like it's foolish, right? Right. You well, need let me the prince to save like, the princess. I just literally <laughs> did some self care. Need someone. I just literally did some self care on Wednesday mm-hmm. when I got a shape up. Yeah. Then I went and got a massage. You always do self care. Yeah, and then I yeah. went and, and then I took an yeah. hour and a half and sat in a salt room. By myself, I put my phone in the locker. My wife was like livid. She was like, I've been trying to get a hold of you for the last hour and a half. And I was like, please stop. Mm-hmm. Relax. Mm-hmm. I had to take care of Anthony. Absolutely. Because when Anthony's not right up here, can I, I can't be you? right with you and everybody else. And while we're on it, tell yeah. them about the axe room too. Huh? The axe, axe oh, room that you... Yeah. So, yeah. you know, again, sometimes, you know, we build up... <laughs> Some frustration and some anger and That's stuff right. like that. And so, you know, I, I told my partner, I said, yo, I feel like I was going through a lot at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, my mother is on her deathbed. I got a lot of stuff going on, and I just kept feeling like this anger, right? And I felt like because I own, you know, this transition of living home, and I got, you know, about 100 residents, 
and like I'm responsible for like a hundred lives, ten employees, and all these bills and all that. And it was just like, when do I get to cry? When do I get to like say, hey, I'm not okay today? Right. And I was just bottling up, and I was just running, and I'm just mm-hmm. running off these fumes. And I told my partner, I was like, listen. Like, I need you guys right now. Like, I need to go and channel this in a positive way or not I'm going to explode on somebody. Mm -hmm. And we went to a rec room. Have you ever been to a smash room? No, but I've seen it. Let me tell you something. It was, it almost sounded childish, Mm -hmm. right? But it felt so good. And and it it dawned on me as little kids when we running around the streets and we we breaking bottles Mm -hmm. and we just breaking stuff, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It seems like we're just being malicious, but for some kids, it's releasing it. some type of anger to yeah. channel it. I Man, I grab the axe hammer, I smash some microwaves, some TV, some, uh, and I was feeling good. I left over there, it was like, that's, my that's partners just good. stood back and was like, yo, you, <laughs> you got everything out. No, that's, that's actually a smart thing. It, you have to do self care. Yeah. It's okay to Very date important. yourself. It's okay so, to treat yourself. And yeah. I tell everybody, listen, if I'm not 100, I can't be 100 for you. Right. But I have to learn to love me most and most importantly, more than anybody else. Yeah. Because then it, it's physically impossible so, to love someone more than you love yourself. That's right. I res- respect. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you hear that all the time. Oh, I love you more. Mm-hmm. How? Right. But you don't, if you're doing what you're doing, you don't even love yourself. How can you love me? Right. See, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Loving like, on you. loving on me and that's just right. taking care of me because I've, I've, I've always been like a relationship type of girl. I'm so in love with love. Like, that's just who I've yeah. always been. And this is the first time where it's like, I'm alone. Like, now it's like facing yourself in the mirror. And I think mm-hmm. it's time. Like, mm-hmm. So I'm definitely going on that date. It there might be a little sushi date. There you go. Listen, go treat yourself because that's what you deserve. Yeah. And then, listen, no one's going to treat you the way you're going to treat yourself. Exactly. Right? Man, get yourself a dragon roll with that sushi. No, no? you got to try the Godzilla. Roll? What? The Godzilla roll. The Godzilla, roll. The Godzilla rolls. Never heard of the Godzilla rolls. <laughs> oh, so good. I got to look into the so Godzilla good. rolls. Huh? It is so good. It has like every, it's so colorful too. It's similar to the rainbow roll, but oh, yeah, really? just... Uh, on like on, on steroids yes that's what it's i'm talking me. about so <laughs> listen i know you're passionate right let's tell the people out there what the rain got going on mm-hmm. what 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 to look forward to how to follow you how mm-hmm. how how to to reach out okay and what's coming to silver rain because the world yeah. is about to <laughs> you know what i mean like i know what's going on Eric knows what's going on. You know what's going on. Right. But the you world know. has an idea. <laughs> they don't know. And like, we're so honored and privileged to actually be sitting here with you today. Thank you. And like, you're just a lovely soul. Thank so you. Tell everybody what to expect. What's coming out. <gasps> yes. Okay. So, I mean, so many things are happening. Um, I'll start off with, we just mastered five songs. Um, amazing. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> Five songs. Um, yes. We're gonna put that out soon, so it'll be on all platforms. Thank you. Every, every second of, you. Of, of, of your blessings, your energy, you know what you're gonna bring back into this world, into the music industry. Like it's something that is needed. Yeah. It is something that will be embraced. Mm-hmm. And like, if people haven't seen your IG and seeing mm-hmm. the movement and the transformation on where you're moving on like i said we're honored and privileged to have you yeah. to see this growth and like i just hope when you get to that super superstar status i don't forget you i know don't, yeah, don't yeah. forget <laughs> us okay that's, that's right I know okay. and, listen, <laughs> and listen just you know on a on a serious level people feel other people's genuineness yeah and so and i say that because a lot of people felt my genuineness, and I and I identify that. I yeah. recognize that and understand it. Mm-hmm. And I I don't I don't just toot my horn that I'm a genuine person. I take that with all humility. Mm-hmm. And when somebody tell me it, you know, I understand that yes, he do see my soul yeah. because that's what I bear, and I I believe that's what you do. 
when I when every time I see you, it just seems like your whole soul is bit like right right before my eyes. Want. So yeah. I feel your genuineness. That's it. And I I normally don't even have glasses on. I just don't have makeup on. I had a long night. That's but right. I'm, You're still beautiful. Yes, the way you are. That's yeah, I mean, so then I can take my glasses off. Stop playing. No, <laughs> so you want to plug in your social media? Let yes. people know, you know, how to be on your social media. Follow you. Okay. Let's give like thousands and millions of likes and like let's mm -hmm. let's blow you up. Yes, please. I, I, I want to say thank you for that. I I try to stick no to questions. that. I'm big on that. Um, but my social media. Okay, so it's S I L V A R E I G N. That's good. Yeah. It was clear. <laughs> so it's Silver Rain. Clear. Um, <laughs> my TikTok, Silver Rain as well. I love TikTok. I'm so obsessed. I try to stay away from it, but it calls my name. I know. I, I'm and I so, follow I'm you like every so step of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like eight, I'm so ADD yeah. with, with, with TikTok. It's so, no, don't anymore. even download it. Yeah. You will get sucked right into it. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah, I was just okay, I just yes, please. So I it's got the, you on IG. I didn't yes. know you had to take that. Yes. Oh, you're gonna have fun because <laughs> I do like a little acting there. Yeah, I love it. Nah, I love yeah. it. Um, and my dancing too. But um, yeah, silver rain on that as well. All right. So with that being said, yeah. this was like. An amazing episode. Absolutely. We got to interview Silver Rain I'm and Rain. To our next right. Episode, <laughs> Rain. Right? We, we gonna, got. That's right. Listen, Somebody. we gonna we gonna see all Rain. We gonna interview all Rain. There yeah, you all go. That, that, that's all right. of them. That, that's right. I haven't named them, but we can. Yeah. There, there you go. Listen, mm -hmm. we're gonna keep. We're we'll bring you back and like everyone. Like I said, for me, mm -hmm. the mental health is so big. Personality. Same. And it's like yes, really really bring more awareness yeah and i'm down with that I'm because that, that, listen it does it, it, it doesn't have to limitate you on what you can and can't do absolutely you agree. know the world just really needs right. to open up and start embracing it and helping instead of judging right and let's start by putting it in movies that's right. Damn. That's, right. That's how you do it. There you go. You heard Idolize it. Idolize that, America. Love uh, all brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Listen, this is Success After Lockdown, man. We just had the lovely, beautiful uh, Silver Rain on here. Mm -hmm. um, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, YouTube, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Anchor Apple um, Music. TikTok on every social media platform yeah. you can find us. We're here to change the stigma on mental health, but also on formerly incarcerated men and women who are judged by our path and not by our actions and how we live in today.